Hello friends and welcome to my bonus card for my Christmas and July series. Today I want to share with you how I created this cute snowman spinner card using some awesome products from Mama Elephant. So let's get into it. Today I'm going to be using the Snowman Agenda Stamp and Die Set from Mama Elephant which I have pre-stamped on some Nina Solar White cardstock. I'm also using the Mixed Holiday Greetings from Mama Elephant as well. And we're going to be making this into a 5x7 card. So the first thing I wanted to do is I wanted to get my background ink blended. Again, if you know me, this is one of my favorite techniques and color combinations for wintry scenes. I'm going to be using my Distress Oxide inks. I'm going to be using Black Soot, Chipped Sapphire, and Salty Ocean. And I wanted it to be kind of that the center was lighter than the outside kind of almost like a vignette or a mat and again this is one of my favorite techniques i've done this several times i've done it recently in several cards um if this bores you <laughs> you can skip through it but again this is just my preferred method and technique to create a beautiful winter scene for our little snowman here so i'm just going in circular motions um, to create a lighter center um, because that's where we're going to be doing our spinner element and going to be doing our greeting so i wanted it to be nice and light and I wanted to get this done first because I wanted to make sure that it was dry completely before we went in and did any kind of splattering or heat embossing. Taking that black soot around the edges and you can see that that really makes a dramatic um, look and I love doing this. Next we're going to get into the coloring. I have used some MFT Extreme Black ink and I've stamped these onto some Nina Solar White cardstock. Um, I'm only going to show the coloring of one sheet of snowmen because it's all the same and um, just to kind of make it go by a little bit quicker. I'm going to throw on a little bit of music here through the coloring. It won't take very long and once it's all done we'll come back and finish up together.
Once I had finished all of the coloring on both sheets, I used the coordinating dies to cut all of these cute little snowmen out. Once they were all cut out, we can get started on creating the actual spinning element of our card today. Now, I had seen this spinning card technique or style um, done by, um, I think it was Ashley Tucker um, on her particular YouTube channel, and I thought I would give it a try. It was a really neat way of creating a spinner card using some of the materials that you have already. Now, first I'm going to take some white gouache and create our actual snow scene in the background here. I'm just going to water down that white gouache and I'm going to flick it across my scene here. And I ended up getting like a huge glob later on. You'll see that here coming up. And I ended up fixing that. I don't show that fixing it on here, but it was a really simple fix. I just ink blended over that area again, let it dry and added some more snow. So here you can see I've got a nice fine dusting of snowflakes and then I'm going to go in with my um, Prima metallic colors and I'm going to be using this kind of a white shimmery color to create some more snow look in the background. I want it to be very shimmery and sparkly just to add a little bit more interest to the background because the majority of the card is going to be focused around those snowmen and the spinning nature of the card. So here's where I ended up getting a big glob of color. Um, it just kind of dripped off the edge of the um, acrylic block because I had too much on there. Um, and at first I was like, oh no, what am I going to do? Because I kept making it worse and worse. So I thought I'm just going to let it sit off to the side and dry and I can come back to it and fix it up in a little bit. So you can see here, I have that spot kind of fixed up. I just ink blended over it and it worked out fine. Now I'm taking some nested circle dies from Waffle Flower and I'm deciding on the size of the spinner that I want to use. And I did a lot of practicing ahead of time, kind of figuring it out, testing on some like scrap card stock, how to get the actual spinner mechanism to work. And there's a couple of things I would probably do differently. Um, you know, maybe pop it up, uh, you know, add a little bit of more dimension just to get the spinning element to work a little bit nicer. Um, but I do like the way that this turned out. It spins great. Um, my kids have been spinning it. It's still holding together and it's good to go. So again, this was just a little bit of a process, but I really liked creating it. Um, this was a lot of fun to make and I think I'll do it again. So I'm going to get the actual back portion attached to my card base first. Again, this is a five by seven card. I wanted it to be a little bit larger so that I could have more snowmen. Now I probably could have got away with doing a like six by six card, um, but I don't have any envelopes for that. And I didn't want to actually kind of create one and I didn't want to have to hand deliver this one. I really want this one to come through the mail um, as being a nice surprise for somebody. So I am fiddling around with how I'm going to add all of this together and I wanted to make sure that that white background wasn't going to show through the spinning element. So I just die cut a circle of some soft navy cardstock from Simon so that you can't see what's going on behind it. And in order to get the spinning mechanism to work, I needed to create a larger circle to go over top of the spinning portion so that it doesn't come flying off when you spin it. So I'm just going to take a circle cut here and I'm going to ink blend over top of it. Now again, I could have done this ahead of time, but I was still kind of experimenting and practicing and just kind of figuring out how to get all of this to work. And it does work out in the end and I really like the way it turned out. So I'm just ink blending this panel because this is also where our sentiment is going to go to match what I've got going on in the background. And this was really simple. Um, I just went through and used those same ink colors blended it around, added some splatter, and it was good to go. Get all this ink blended, get it dried, and we can um, really get this spinning mechanism to work. I was really excited to do this card and share it on my Christmas in July series. I had so much fun making this series. I've had a lot of positive feedback with it, and I think it's going to become a staple in my YouTube channel. Um, and I'm super excited to get ready for the holidays because I had so many ideas pop up during this series that I want to use them in my Christmas series for this year. So look forward to that. And I can't wait to share all of those great ideas with you guys as well. So I'm just using the same metallic watercolor set and gouache to create my ink blended circle cut here. Again, it doesn't 
have to match perfectly, but it matches so closely that you would never know that I had actually die cut this separate and did it all by itself unless you watch my YouTube channel. So I'm really excited for fall this year. Um, I put a comment out on my YouTube community uh, today about my fall series and what you guys would like to see. I'm thinking of kind of going to mo more towards the elegant um, kind of cards and sophisticated and simple. Um, tell me what you think in the comments below or comment on that um, post on our community and let me know what you think. Now we're going to get into actual building of the spinning element. So I'm just taking some 3M foam tape here and I have it doubled up and I've taken the release paper off of both sides so that I can create a circle around where the spinning element is going to happen. And this is what's going to actually create the spin. Now here's where I probably could have added a little bit more dimension behind the actual spinning element so that it was popped up off of the card base a bit more. Um, again, practice, this is the first time I've created a spinner card like this. Actually, this is my first spinner card ever. I don't do very many um, kind of mechanically inclined cards, I guess you could say, other than like a shaker card, but those are super simple. I'm also taking my anti-static powder tool and going around the outside edge of that foam tape so that the spinner card doesn't, or the spinning element, excuse me, doesn't stick to the 3M foam tape because we want it to spin. We don't want it to stick. So I just placed that smaller circle back on top to kind of help give some dimension to where our greeting is going to go. And you can see here that it spins after a while, after you spin it more and more, it does spin a lot smoother. Next, I'm going to take that final circle, the one that's going to have our greeting on it, and I'm going to choose one from this Mixed Holiday Greetings from Mama Elephant. And I really love this collection of greetings. They're really, really nice. I think they're sized perfectly and can go with any style of card. And there's so many, and I just love all of them. So I really had a hard time choosing which one I wanted. And I decided on this one, and I'm going to do some heat embossing. I'm going to get it centered as best I can, and I'm going to be using some Versamark ink and some Brutus Monroe Alabaster White Embossing Powder. Get that stamped down. I did a double stamping just to make sure that I got it nice and bright because I wanted to make sure that it, stand out. it stands out against all of that dark and all of those other snowflakes. Now, I do have like a big kind of like glob near the bottom of my greeting. Um, I didn't notice it until after I had put all the embossing on and I was like, Ooh, I hope this doesn't take away from the greeting. And I tried to use my sand eraser to get it to go away. And I thought, meh, it's okay. I'll just leave it. It's, you know, nobody's perfect. Perfection is overrated. And I, you know, I was happy with the way the card turned out anyway. And I don't think you really notice it too much. I mean, you do, but it's a snowflake. So here you can see I'm trying to use that sand eraser to get that um, little spot to go away. It worked a little bit. It's not as, you know, in your face, hey, there's a big glob right here. But um, I got it to um, work out in the end. So I'm just using some Tombow glue here to attach my top circle onto the spinning element. And we are going to be ready to add our little snowman. So get that centered on there. Press it down. And I used a liquid adhesive just so I had some, you know, some wiggle room. And now that spinning element is trapped underneath that larger circle and it will spin freely. This was, I was so thrilled at this point when I got that spinning mechanism to work. I was just over the moon and thrilled with it. So next I'm going to go through my pile of snowmen here and decide on which ones I want to use. I don't end up using all of them. Um, I wanted to go for kind of like a pattern you know, red, green, gray, just so I had a nice variety of snowmen. And I was going to use liquid glue and I thought, mm, I better not use liquid glue because it could ooze out and mess up my spinning element. So I decided to use 3M foam tape and I'm just lining up the snowmen in the order that I want to place them down so that I have a good spacing. I know how many I'm going to use, which ones I'm going to use and where they're going to be placed. Once I had them all in the location that I wanted them in, I'm just using some of three or I'm just using some of these um, foam squares. 
I'm not sure which brand they are, but I'll link to something that's similar in the description below. They're just foam squares. You could use um, Doris foam squares. You could use anything that you wanted, but I wanted to pop them up so that they would be away from that spinning mechanism a little bit and away from the background so that they could spin freely. Now I'm just gonna speed through this portion of the video because it's all repetition and it's just getting those placed down. Once I have them all placed down, you can see that this spinning mechanism works perfectly. I was just tickled, I was squealing, well not really squealing, but I was really excited to see that this was working and that they were spinning and my kids absolutely thought this was so cool. They kept saying, mom, that is amazing. How did you do that? And seeing the joy on their face made me feel so proud of myself that I created this card and that it worked. I was so happy that it worked. I have so many failures that you guys don't see that whenever I see one work this well and come together this perfectly, I just get so excited. So I'm just going through and adding some white gel pen details to all of my little snowmen here just to add a little bit of character and interest. And you could have done this before you attach them, but I didn't think about it until I had them on here and that I wanted to give them just a little bit of, you know, pop and uh, just to make them stand out a little bit more. Once I had all of that detail finished, we're gonna add some more finishing details to the background just to add a little bit of interest and to make it pop a little bit more. I am adding my favorite Tailored Expressions snowflakes to the background with some multimedia matte. And I liked using the large and small snowflakes and I added them to the background and to the top or the front portion of the spinner just to really enhance the snowy scene. And I made sure that I didn't place them anywhere really close to the snowmen so that it didn't interfere with them spinning. I'm going to add those and then I'm going to add um, some Nouveau Crystal Drops in Simply White to add a little bit more interest as well. And that will finish up this card. I hope you guys enjoyed this bonus card for my Christmas and July series. You guys made this series a success and I was so thrilled to create it and I can't wait to get started on some more holiday cards. And stay tuned because my fall series will be starting here really, really soon. I will have another video for you guys um, probably this weekend um, to finish up July. And we're going to get into some fall cards. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend and have a great rest of your day. I'll see you guys again real, real soon. Bye. On screen, I've got a few videos that I think you'll enjoy. Consider hitting the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any more videos at my YouTube channel.